I mean, what a fun market this is. This is awesome. So this thing's coming out. They ra- <laughs> I mean, I have so much to say about this. It's funny. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if this thing opens. Like, it's not open yet. By the time you, you're you going to listen to this or watch it on our YouTube channel, because we should use the channel, it, it, it would open. Uh, they said the price is $78 a share. And they're like, that's higher than the $65, $68 price, right? Uh, okay, it's higher than that $65, $68 price that, that you put out three days ago. But two weeks ago, this company had a $54 billion valuation. Now it's coming out at $78, which is going to give it more like a $70 billion valuation, right? So a $70 billion valuation. And what are they doing? They're doing something. They're producing something that the whole entire world is producing right, right now, right? Massive. Everyone's going to produce 3 million EVs. We're going to have 25 million Hundreds of millions of EVs by next year, if you listen to every one of these companies. Uh, they don't have the supply chains. They don't have anything. It, it, just to see the valuation of this company is is amazing, right? Because they're doing $1 million in sales. Put that in perspective. We're doing 3 to 4x that. Our valuation isn't $70 billion. I wish it was. You and <laughs> I it's both. Not. Uh, they lost $1.3 billion last quarter. So if you do the math on that, right? They're raising $11 billion. That means they're selling a portion of their company, $11 billion worth, which is a whole company, a $70 billion valuation. That's $11 billion in cash. That's why you go public. You're bringing this cash. Then you, ha- you can tap the equity market. You have access to capital. You get a higher valuation. Yeah, that's why you go. Right? So they have $11 billion. That creates, based on what you're losing, a 24-month runway. With almost no revenue over that time, they think they're going to sell all these cars by 2023, 2024, uh, over 50000 Uh It comes with... 6,000 plus employees that you have to pay. Uh, you know, they say they have a backlog of 55,000 vehicles, which are expected to be delivered by, by 2023. I don't know how that's possible. I mean, if you want to put that in perspective, Tesla's been around for a while now. You see Tesla's on, cars on the road. That's two and a half times the number of Teslas produced over the past 12 months. But this company's magically going to produce all those cars. For me, when I look at this, it's just a sign of the times. I, you know, it makes me think like a top is coming when I see a valuation like this on a company that's doing this much in sales. And so many people are going to be making money when these insiders uh, open up the doors. When that lockup period ends, you're going to see massive, massive sales. This thing can open up at 100 and go to 120. It can go to 300. This is not Tesla. This is a, a big difference from Tesla. They have a long, long way to go. And the valuation assumes that these guys are going to be the biggest EV maker on the planet. If you believe that and you buy it now, you still probably might not make money, but that valuation is absolutely insane. You know the valuation, you know, the market caps are four in GM, right? Are, are, are 80 billion. This thing's probably going to come out at the same valuation a little bit higher than those companies. How old is Ford, Daniel? I don't know. Like, uh, I mean, I don't know. Over 100 years old. They've been making tanks for the army in World War II, right? This is a company, right? So this is like all this time, all this time, you got a company like this that's what, 10, 11, 12 years old that comes out and already you have companies like Ford and GM looking up to them, which I find interesting. Yeah. That's uh, so I have to admit this morning when we were grabbing coffee and BSing in the office for a minute, I thought that you were. I don't know if exaggerating is the right word. I almost thought you were leading me on in a fun way because you're like, hey, you know, you want to talk about uh, Rivian today. And I knew the IPO was coming up. and I, But all I think about when I hear Rivian is, oh, yeah, they got some huge order from Amazon at some point. I remember seeing headlines about that. And when you said they're doing like a million in revenue, I thought you were just kind of like, you know, <laughs> throwing numbers out. Yeah. So I throw, I go to CNBC and it says, yeah, the third bullet point here is Rivian expects to lose $1.28 billion this quarter. Mm-hmm. So- we're in the fourth quarter now, while generating, and you got to love this wording because words have meanings here. Generating no more than a million dollar in revenue for the same amount for the same period, and I'm thinking, wow! Like, so to your point yesterday on Wall Street Unplugged, uh, for those of you who haven't listened, uh, listen because it's a good segment, and the conditions right now are as good as they're going to get. Easy money policies, low interest rates. Yeah, you got a lot of fears and and this wall of worry with inflation and things, but. It's getting very hard to justify stuff like this in a market. I mean, when people ask us what we do, Frank, I mean, hell, we're going to have to say like a financial circus or entertainment show because, you know, how do you say, hey, you know, should I buy Rivian? Well, yeah, fundamentals have proven not to matter for quite a while now and valuations can always be stretched and you could always do this and that in growth companies. But wow, like this is this is like laughable to say, 
What's going on here? Now, the Amazon thing is cool, but it's still 2030. They're going to deliver 100,000 cars to Amazon by 2030. Hey, listen, I was... It's I, not even... It's 2022. Let's round up, people. They right? made that announcement. I go to Consumer Electronics Show every year, okay? And if you haven't been there, you have to go at least once. It's unbelievable, right? So last year, they had it virtual, which was horrible. 2019, I was there. We brought, you know, a video guy and filming everything. And it was amazing because people were talking about Rivian there. Ford was there talking EVs. It's 2019, January 2019. And I remember we did an interview with an executive, one of the top guys, a top executive, because Amazon, it, there's a bunch of different areas, right? Now they're having like four different hotels, but the main area in the conference hall, they have this huge area. We have the Intels and, you know, Microsofts and, and uh, you know, the Qualcomms when you walk in, right? All these big Chinese, companies, massive, massive boots, right? Probably millions and millions of dollars. And then you have to go to a separate place and they have all the cars and the vehicles there, right? And then have NVIDIA there with their technology. So NVIDIA would have two booths because they have one in that area with Intel showcasing like, you know, the, their stuff with their chips. And then they'll have like the auto segment, right? So the auto place has gotten so big that people from Detroit Auto Show, because it almost runs like at the same time, they were going, all the companies started going there because the crowds were much bigger, right? They were getting like 25,000, 100,000 people. So it, it became a big event and the car area is huge. So we walk in there and I see Amazon, I'm like, why is Amazon in the area of cars? So we interviewed them and they started talking about this and we have that interview and it was, you know, Rivian and making an investment in this and now they're going to have Alexis and all these, and all this but investing in this makes sense for Amazon, right? It makes sense because they're like, okay, we want to have EV vehicles, right? That's going to save us money in the future. We want to lock in something that's good. We did it with a small company and now we have a percent. That makes sense. Now, let's go with Ford here because people are saying that they're like high five in Ford that they have an investment in this company, which is whatever, 10, 12%. And they're like, that's great. This is a clear competitor to Ford. Daniel, it's a clear competitor, right? So it's like us as a publishing company investing in a competitor and that competitor becoming three, four, five X bigger than us, right? So, but investing it at the very early stages. So you have Ford investing in this company in the very early stages. Why not purchase that? Co that company is going to have today, it's going to have a higher market cap than Ford. It's going to be bigger than Ford, this company, right? You had the opportunity to buy, they, they're coming out with an electric truck and SUVs. That's what's exciting, Right. That's where, you, believe me, I'm driving SUVs, driving around the world, gas prices are going through the roof, dying, right? So that's where the market is, right? People love SUVs, they love they love pickup trucks. These guys are going to compete directly with the F-150, which is coming out. So instead of Ford going in and buying this company and no, learning about their technology and buying in this company, they decide to say, hey, we're going to invest in this company, right? And now they're getting a high five for that. Instead of, hey, these guys have great technologies, you could poach the engineers, do whatever you want, you all Ford. You could tap the debt markets, but here's the difference because this company now has this valuation and you know how much Ford is spending? Because I don't know how much Ford spent to invest in it. Maybe a billion dollars and it's worth like eight billion now. They're spending $30 billion over the next few years on EV technology because they don't know, they don't have the capacity. Like they're only going to be able to sell 10% of the amount of gas trucks. So they sell whatever, I think it's like 800,000 of the Ford F-150s. Only 10% of them are going to be able to sell over the next two, two three years because- for EVs, as they turn to EVs, they just don't have the capacity. They don't know where they're going to get the manufacturing from when it comes to batteries and the technology and that's going to get better and better and infrastructure. Thirty billion, so you got to figure fifteen billion that's going to be wasted. You could have took that fifteen billion and bought this company, and look where you are now. You're playing catch up, and yes, you have a stake in the company, but this is for, you have a stake in a company that's bigger than you. Is twelve years old when you were making tanks in World War Two. It's just. The innovation behind some of these, and GM2 has a similar market cap. For me, I get fired up about this because Ford talks about how great they are and all this technology. And stuff. Here it is. You had this company. You could have bought them. And look at the valuation of this thing is bigger than your company now. And instead, you're like, let's get a stake in this company just in case it turns out to be bigger than us or, or this technology is good. And now look what happens. They're gonna, they might wind up buying Ford two, three years from now if this valuation keeps going higher. Yeah, anything's possible, especially in this market.